Now, are you going to be able to take what we just said before and... Yeah, piece it all together and whatnot. Yeah. Oh! Oh! Chael Sonnen, welcome back to Menace and the Man. Is he in? Yeah, it says con up, connecting audio. What's up, man? You look like you're in the lab right now, Chael. Yeah, I went upstairs. I got the kids downstairs behaving like maniacs. Oh, yeah. Love it. Love it. It's the way it goes, right? Yeah, well, you got it. Like, in my head, like, I, I like when, you know, I have, like, my lady or whatever, like, or my dad's like, your kids are being wild. But, like, listen, they need a window to be sure. wild. Yeah. But if you have them act like saints all the time, it's not real. What kind of life is that? I'm with you. Yeah. Well, Chael said one of the best lines last time he was on. He's like, I got two little terrorists at home. And all they do, all, all they do is break shit. Every day. Every day they break something. Every single day. I could come home and fix something. <laughs> but you have a girl, right? Yeah. We haven't started. Have we started? Am I being out of character? No. Oh, yeah. All right. Yeah, we're live right now. So you can go do oh. whatever you want. Oh. By the way, Dennis, <laughs> I must tell you, that's a fantastic haircut you got. I hope you tip that guy. You're looking great, buddy. My lady did it. Did she? Yeah, I pay her with kisses. What do you mean, by the way? What do you mean, do I got a girl? I'm a very handsome man. Of course I have a girl, okay? All right. Always. That's a that's a quarantine cut right there. No, I'm talking about a daughter. You silly goose. Oh, my God. I'm embarrassed. I have a daughter <laughs> and a son. Yes. Yeah. And a super you're, you're talking about your kids breaking things. Yeah, she breaks stuff, you know, but it's really weird stuff. That's like she'll get on her hands and knees and then she'll, she'll like the door stop or they go ding, ding, ding. She'll like pull that off the wall, like stuff like this. Like, oh, God. Hadn't even thought of that. Would have locked it up. Hadn't thought of that one. <laughs> now, are you handy? Like you're able to fix anything they break? I can fix most of it, yeah. Yeah, I grew up in construction. So, yeah, I mean, I, I could probably build a house if I needed to, yeah. Okay. Wow. Same thing with Stan, not, not the menace. Yeah. <laughs> well, I could, but just it might it, it, it will work. It just won't be awesome. Sure, might yeah. not look right. Right, right. And aesthetics are important. Man, yeah, I'm really bad with that. Menace would make like a good site foreman or something, though. He's good for like motivation. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. yeah no, he can crack the whip. I agree with you on that. Keep yeah. Go and fix that. No, not like that. Where's your tools? <laughs> you need lunch. I'm good there. Oh, Boom, he hired. He, he he's very good with the lunch. Like whenever I've done work with him, that's the number one thing. Every five minutes, you want to sure. eat? You hungry? You ready to go? What do you need? He's good with that. All my guys are fed beers, whatever they need, water. Got them. So what are you guys talking about over here today? What do you think about this Masvidal business? Masvidal and Usman aren't gonna fight. That can't be right. That sounds weird. That's what we were just talking about. Then we had a little technical difficulty, but we figured that out. But yeah, uh. I don't know. Did you see the report, Chael? Dana supposedly said that Usman said he wants $3.5 million guaranteed. Well, I did not see that Dana came out and said that number. That, that's a little lofty. Yeah. He's, that's what he wants guaranteed to fight during the quarantine. And then I saw you, one of your posts, because I'm obviously subscribed to the bad guy, Inc., Chael Sonnen. Um, Conor McGregor is the number one contender right now, by default. Sure. I agree with that. I agree with that. I mean, Connor did dip his toe into that weight class. He beat Cowboy. Cowboy was ranked in the top 10 at the time. It took him 20 seconds, and it's hard to act like Connor's not in there somewhere. And then yeah. when you start moving the other pieces on the board, you know, you got Leon Edwards can't get into the country. You got Tyron Woodley is busy this weekend with Gilbert Burns. You've got uh, Masvidal saying no to the number one contendership, rumored to be going after Diaz. Colby Covington is. I just haven't heard what's going on. I don't know if he's sick or hurt or waiting for somebody. I mean, just by process of elimination, Connor starts to look better and better. Yeah, and I have constant alerts. I had an alert yesterday that said Colby Covington is actually off of the American top team roster. I heard that, too. You know, I hope that isn't true. I didn't follow up with him to find out, but I, I tend to think where there's smoke, there's fire. You know, in this sport, there always is. Whenever you hear a rumor, it's usually a, a report. It turns out to be true. And that would be a tough one because he's in Florida. I don't know how much his roots are in Florida. If he's seeing a gal, by example, something along these lines, but he can't go over to the Black Zillions. That's Kamara's team. And so then it comes, you know, where are you going to go? Is he going to go out to Colorado? Some great teams out there. Is he going to come back home? 
uh, join back up with us. I, I don't know, I, but I am I am curious about that. You know, when you lose a gym and you got a new environment, it's a big deal. Yeah, that's what I'm seeing. A lot of people say is that that's what they think is the fit's going to be right back there in Oregon. Yeah, no, we'll see. I mean, that might be the answer. There's some good guys out here. Austin Vanderfort comes to mind. I mean, there's similar yeah. weight classes. Uh, yeah, I know Chris Weidman and and Ally Quinn took to social media and invited him to come join. Longo Sarah, so you know maybe he'll look around a little bit. One thing about Colby, he is not afraid to get in his car and drive. I mean, that guy did that in college. He went to junior college in Iowa, then he came back to finish up at Oregon State, jumped right in the car, and and headed out to Florida for his MMA career. So he's not afraid to pack up and move. It's not that's something that would bother me. I kind of like to be in the same place. It doesn't bother him. That, that's exciting for him. So I, I'm looking forward to seeing where he's going, but I look forward to hearing the drama behind it as well. Yeah, that's hey, what I'm going to say. I don't think Long Island would be an awful fit for Kobe. I agree. I agree. The guys that they got on that team right now, man, they got a, a close knit group. They got a lot of knowledge, a lot of connections. I could. Oh, yeah. yeah. And they would all gain from it. I'd worry about size, though. There's not, like, we we saw it with LaFlair when LaFlair had to go to Florida to get his rounds oh, yeah. in. There's not a lot of 170s. There's pretty much Weidman at 185, but Weidman can go with, like, 205ers and heavyweights. So what, Colby, yeah, I, Colby'd be the I, big guy. Yeah, he might have to bring somebody in. Then, if, if my memory is correct, he and Matt Sarah have some heat. But you know, maybe those guys worked it out. I don't know. I'm just saying. You know, if you got a free agent like Colby Covington that's looking for a home and you're running a gym, I would think you would want to reach out. Yeah, it's easy to get some heat with Matt Sarah, though. Yeah, that's real easy, right? Yeah, yeah. You you want to you insult Matt? He's coming back at you. Don't make any mistake about that. I know Matt in passing. I went up to him one time at an event. I was like, oh, I do the show with Bermudez. We got to get you on the show. He was like, all right, cool. So then I was like, how about Tuesday? He was like, whoa, whoa, whoa. I didn't say I was coming on yet. How about this? And he got like an attitude. He's like, you tell Bermudez to hit me up and then I'll come on the show. Then he went up to, then he went up to Dennis and was like, yo, your boy, you got to check your boy. Yeah, you got to check your boy. He comes up to me, says I do a show. You got to come on Tuesday. He's like, whoa. And I was like, ah. Uh. Because I'll tell you what, Stan, sometimes he gets a few bases going. Yeah. And he can come off like a little more aggressive, you know? But that's what Stan's got to do. I mean, if you're booking guests, you got to make that ask, right? You know what? I've invited Sarah on my show a couple times. He won't even respond. I've known him over a decade. He won't even respond. Really? I've gone on his show twice. And both times that he asks, I get back to him like that, trying to set an example for him. Nothing. Uh, Radio silent. Almost like he's got my phone number blocked. It's actually kind of funny. I hope he continues to ignore me just so I can continue to tell this story. <laughs> <laughs> well, we have a segment because sometimes, uh, like, we've been going back for the Gregor gang, Gregor on. He came on one time on the phone. He had to go. We tricked him. Quick, but like, we'll, like, we'll end up, we'll end the episode. Like, all right, and uh, uh, we didn't have time for Gregor. We're, uh, we'll get him next time. And we're sure. ending every show with that. <laughs> That's great. Yeah, like uh, I got it. Matt Damon or Jimmy Kimmel did it to Matt Damon is where it comes from. You ever see that, Shale? No, I don't see that one. Those guys got a funny relationship, though. Well, he did like 50 episodes, and at the end of every episode, he was like, everybody, sorry, Matt Damon, we ran out of time, maybe next week. And he ended like 50 <laughs> episodes. Then one episode, Matt Damon showed up and was like, why do you keep doing this every week? Why are you doing this to me? That's and, funny. That's funny. Look, if there's ever proof that if you dream of being on TV and anybody can make it, it's Jimmy Kimmel. Oh, yeah. He's Hollywood, that guy. What's his That's story? Guy, the guy's got a face for radio, and he's anything but funny, and he's got his own comedy show. I mean, in all, all due yeah. respect, whatever his mother had to do or what he had to do behind the scenes, <laughs> my goodness, he got it done, didn't he? I mean, you have your talk show, but I could see you doing something like that, like some late-night comedy TV. Jimmy Kimmel is do I think you could see anybody doing it. I got a horse. That, that my neighbor's horse could go do it. Yeah. But I could see late night with Chael Sonnen. Sure. Yeah. Sure, let's do it. All right, we got to talk to NBC and ABC about that one. But I even don't think so. I mean, if Matt Damon can get past their low rent security, why don't we just go bump the set and tell Jimmy he's off tonight? It, it, it seems like that, that door is a little bit open, isn't it? Oh, yeah. Hey, and the, our whole thing is, what's he going to do? Beat us up? That's what I'm saying. I mean, I, if Matt Damon could slip past them, yeah, I think that uh, Bermudis and Chael will probably be on that couch. Oh, we'll slide right in there. Oh, we should we'll walk. Hey, Jimmy, there. take the night. T take your shoes for a walk, Jimmy. Go out, go out and get yourself a tattoo. Make it a night to remember. We got this one. We should work on this. So what we were talking about before, before we went into the Colby-Matt Damon 
No one knows. No, no we, one knows what we were talking about. This is the, this is the show about nothing. Look how far Seinfeld got with it. Yeah, well, that's pretty much what this show is. So, no. like, the way you make those great segments, and you'll have like a five minute block where you're talking about one thing. Me and Dennis try so hard to make those. Like, we'll spend five minutes talking about Khabib Gaethje, and then we go off, and then before you know it, we're talking about zebras in yeah. Australia. It always takes you in some other direction. Well, you know, 170, I'll, I'll tell you, I mean, we were kind of talking about 170, but that is a lot of moving doors right now. Is Connor the number one contender? Mm, I understand the people that's going to say he's not, but if you listen to the logic of how he became the number one, I mean, there's an argument that whether you like it or not, there's still a discussion. And uh, I'll tell you what else. Hey, Dennis, you, are you following this Gilbert Burns guy? And the reason I say that is he's won seven of his last eight over two different weight classes, and a lot of people don't know who he is. That's a hard fight for anybody. I think that yeah. this fight with he and Tyron is a is a lot more competitive than maybe the odds makers know. Oh yeah, Dorino's oh, he's a, he's a regular on the show. Dorino Gilbert is one of my boys. I was training with him. I don't know six years ago. I was going down the Black Zillions, and uh, he gave he had he was actually like holy shit, man. Because I actually knew about Gilbert before Gilbert knew about me. And uh, he was like, dude, his ground pounding, I couldn't submit him to talk about me. Like, my pressure gets the wall. And then he he was still, his stand-up was still a little, it was just very, very wild. But it was very scary. You know, I was just like, bang, you know. And then I just watched him progress over this these fights. I'm like, holy shit. So the UFC did a promo today. I wrote goosebumps. I'm like, dude, because that's all very real. He's a problem oh, yeah. everywhere. Oh, yeah. No, this guy this guy can squabble. And a lot of people, you know, when you're Tyron Woodley and you're this big star, you're champion of the world, people expect a lot of things for you. It's a very unfair situation as far as your approach goes. And it, and it seems that I keep reading things like, uh, oh, Tyron should win this. Who's Gilbert Burns? Like, no, I mean, you guys don't know who Gilbert Burns is. That's on you. If you're not paying attention to a guy that won seven of his last eight, that's on you. Yeah. And it's not like he's winning them, like, decisions. He's knocking people out. He's submitting them. He's taking people down. He's like, he's beating, he's tapping, or he's knocking out the best grapplers and he's knocking out some of the best strikers. Yep. Oh, and even people. It's going to be a problem. Like he knocked out Damian Maya and then everyone's now going, oh, Damian Maya's old. Damian Maya had his back in that fight. Gilbert got out. Gilbert scrambled twice and got out, got out of the situation yeah. that everyone else was done in. You know, everyone else was checkmate there. Yeah, all in the first round, you know. I mean, these are all talking points. I, Tyron Woodley is something very special, but but I think the talking points are relevant. Look, this is a short notice fight. This is a five round fight. Tyron hasn't been in there in a period of time. I, I want to say it's a year, roughly, maybe even a little bit more. Was it March of last year or May? But I mean, you get my point. Right around a year, and then you look at Gilbert. This guy's gone through three or four training camps. Plus, he's secretly doing grappling events every chance he gets. I mean, this guy shakes hands and competes under the lights every five and six times a year. He's a very active guy. Yeah. Stan, what do we got in the odds on that fight? I think it's close, but I think uh, Woodley's a favorite. I'll double check it right oh, now. I, I'll, I, I like Gilbert all day because, like you know, Tyron is, is a, he's a fucking amazing athlete. But I think he has his hands on a lot of different things. Age is not on his side. Whereas Gilbert Burns has just been like going, going, grappling here, grappling here. You know, Tyron's doing a movie here, a rap song here, an appearance here. Gilbert's hungry, man. What? Hang on. Every time someone pulls out, he's the first guy. Put me in. I'm ready. I'll come right yep. now. Yep. And particularly, Dennis, particularly him changing weight classes has really allowed him to mean that. Like, you know, when he doesn't have yeah. to beat the scale, it's like, I'm ready. He's all, yeah. he's never not grappling somewhere or fighting somewhere. He's got something going every single month. The guy's really incredible. They're also very similar. You know, you've got Gilbert, who's a world medalist in Abu Dhabi for grappling. But Tyron was a two-time All-American in wrestling. And, but they both like to come right here. And Tyron's a little bit more uh, exact, and I think that uh, Gilbert does qualify, as you were saying, Dennis is, is a little loopy. But if you're loopy, but you got power, who gives a damn? Those are the right. hardest guys to fight. Guys that are throwing stuff at angles you're not used to, but they got power. Those guys are a problem, man. Gilbert's a problem. Yeah, they yeah. got they got Woodley as the favorite, one eighty. So Bur yeah, that's Bur close. That's fairly close. Burns is a plus one fifty five underdog. Because the thing is, is Tyron's gonna have to meet because. Gilbert's going to come forward. I can see Gilbert or, or uh, Woodley kind of backing up, backing up, backing up, waiting for his shot. But they're going to be in the small octagon, too. 
Oh, that's right. That helps Gilbert out, I think. Yeah. Because we've seen Woodley enough that you know Woodley's game plan. Woodley does that. Woodley's a counter puncher. He does that circle in, and he just tries to like load up that right hand, that little three-piece combination he throws. Gilbert's yeah. probably going to be stalking him in this fight. Yeah, but Gilbert's not going to take him down. I like. I mean, I don't think he takes him down. Like, hey, high crotch takedown. I don't think that's a real thing. No. He has. He'd have to get him loopy, and then you know something like that. I don't think he yeah. can just grab him and throw him down, which is why Tyrone was a champion in the first place. And I read a lot of people saying they really think that Gilbert's going to submit him and submit him fast. I think that's a stretch. You know, I mean, Tyron hasn't even been close to being submitted. Damian Maya never even got close. He really knows those positions, understands them well. So I, I think it comes down – I mean, I'm just making a prediction, but I think the intangibles do matter. I think the fact that it's a five-round fight and Tyron's been out there for – has not been in there for a little bit. But also remind you, Tyron does some of his best work when he's the underdog. And Dennis, as you know, there's something about that approach in athletes. Some athletes want to be the big favorite and everybody believes them, but some other athletes want to stick it to everybody and they love when there's no pressure on them. Even look at Tyron's career, underdog against uh, Wonderboy, underdog the second time against Underboy, underdog against Maya, two to one under, two and a half to one underdog against Till. You remember the hype that Till was coming in right, with? Those right. were his best fights. He, he actually went into the Usman fight as a favorite, kind of affected his approach. And I think also that was Usman's coming out party, though, that fight. For sure. Yeah. Yeah, for right. sure. Um, but, I mean, it's way easier. We, we talk about this all the time for um, Gilbert to get ready to fight Woodley than it is for Woodley to prepare for for Gilbert. You know what I mean? In terms of, yeah. like, like, stats and, like, ranking and, you know, Woodley's already been the champion. Sure. You know I mean? So it's... And nobody knows who Gilbert is. So I'm just like, man, I've been watching Woodley for a very long time, and now he's right in front of me where, you know, Burns probably wasn't even on Woodley's radar for some time. Yeah. No, uh, Burns is the dark horse. I mean, Burns' whole life can change, you know, and for however long it changes. Right? It's just a window. But, I mean, his whole trajectory is going to be different if he gets to jump on, on Tyron. I don't even know that I'm willing to predict that he's going to. I'm just sharing with you. He can, and it surprises me how few people realize he can. Gilbert Burns is fantastic, but for some reason, is still breaking through in terms of name recognition. Yeah. You know what? You know how we pick fights here, Chael? Tell have, me. Have you been on the show yet? All right, we're going with I you. I've your show, but not for the prediction part. No, I'm saying uh, that's how we pick fights. So if you've been on Menace and the Man, oh. we're going with you. <laughs> we, hey, we're rocking with you. Respect. I love it. So as good a system as any. Yeah, like hey. Woodley too. Menace has hit up Woodley, and it'll be like a conversation. So something that guys do sometimes, they'll entertain the conversation. Like, oh, what's up? Hey, blah, blah, blah. Back and forth. And then you go, hey, you want to come on the show? Flat lines. <laughs> Crickets. Sure. Man, sure. Chill, you know what I do? I do the the cricket emojis. Three of them. <laughs> and, hey, and you get responses off the cricket emojis. Sure. You know? Well, hey, I mean, look, you can lead a horse to water. You can't make a drink, Dennis. So many fighters need to go out. They need to get their name out. They come, need to come on great shows like this one that have a big platform, a big audience, but they don't want to do it. And for whatever reason, okay, fair enough. But your placement on the card is going to be directly related to how much media you did. That's just the truth. But it's your career. Do it your way. Right. That's what That's what you've always done is every audio or, you know, any interview you could do, you've always done them. Always do it. Hey, by the way, what do you got in the background there? Is that is that like cereal? What is stacked up? I'm trying to figure that out. It this looks like the, ice cream, but uh, there's no way it's ice by cream. G Fuel. Oh, I see. All right. Yeah, G Fuel got a little caricature, and then the Guinness Book of World Records. Respect for what? I got the fastest time to drink uh, one liter of lemon juice through a straw. Wow, good job. Yeah. And what was that time? We got uh, twenty-two point seven five seconds. Wow, good yeah. job! I mean, that, that that's a real accomplishment. I what really wish Doc ran with that. We we marked that and got me more stuff, but uh, it's tough that's cool. I'm glad I asked. Uh, it, yeah. it, it's one of the funniest videos involving an MMA fighter that you can watch. So the, the company behind him is G Fuel, one of our sponsors. It's like an energy drink or whatever. It's in the gaming community. They used to be in UFC and whatnot. They put on this lemon juice contest, and now they bought. How big is Furious Pete, Menace? Uh, he's a he's a big YouTube star. I'm talking Furious Pete's got like physically. Six million YouTube uh, 
followers or subscribers. And then they brought in two different gamers who had, I don't know, between the two of them, like 10 million followers. And it was me and Brittany Palmer. And we did like um, this, um, I don't know, scavenger hunt around New York City. At the end, Furious Pete, he has like 10 Guinness Book World Records. So anything he tells them they're going to do, Guinness Book of World Records shows up. They have the suits on. It's all official. You know, so, like, hey, you know, you guys want to be in? I'm like, I'll take a few sips, spit it on the guy next to me. It'd be funny. And then the guy did a countdown. I was like, oh, here we go. Let's fucking Let's I'm do gonna, it. I'm Because there was, there was, that was there. Not with my name on it, but it was in the room. Sure. You know, so I'm like, so I fucking hit it hard. I finish. I lift like a foot, you know, in a, like a solo cup, there's the, uh, that little like rim in the bottom. Yep. Yep. That had lemon juice in it. So he's like, sorry, I can't accept this. And I was like, what? So I knew I could do it. Cause I did it that one in 20 seconds. So I'm like, well, he's like, you could retry if you want. I was like, how much time? He's like, I was like an hour. No, I'm like, fuck. So I went, I, I tried to, I was like, do I throw up? What do I do? to try and get ready for the second sure. attempt. So they get, after 20 minutes, I get back up, suck it down in 22 and a half seconds. The guy, the other guy tried it. He gave up, quits. I got the fucking certificate. Cause I'm like, there it is. It's right there. I need that. As a kid, when you saw the Guinness Book of World Records, you're like, oh, I can do one thing in there. Sure. Right? And this was, I was just the right place, right time. And I fucking wasn't gonna drop the opportunity. Just like Eminem. So that- that little rim in the red solo cup cost you 2.5 seconds. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Well, even Menace, I, like I, I was saying, how big is Furious Pete physically? Oh, uh, oh, he's gotta be like 230. Yeah, he's a big boy. So like when like they a big, like a big like bo- you know bodybuilding slash competitive eater. Everyone, sure. everyone there was like, "What the fuck? How how did Dennis win? Like how did Dennis beat you?" And then it was just Menace's professional athlete gameness that was like no i'm winning this i'm taking that trophy mental toughness all right guys i gotta switch gears because i want your opinions here what do you guys make of us uh, henry cejudo i i did not think that retirement was sincere but now he's been stripped and they're moving on i guess he meant it yeah here's what i think i think it's kind of like you know when you see diaz brothers gsp getting all this attention they haven't entered the octagon in years I think it's like in that that realm. He could sit back for three years, and he'll always be in the topic of like new champion. But could he beat Henry? And Henry say, "Hey, I mean, you could try, but it's going to cost you five mil." Sure. You know. No, I guess. I mean, there's something to be said for that. Some of those guys, you are right. They they're still very attractive for sponsorships and signings and some other stuff. Life's a little bit easier. I just didn't think he meant it. You know, he said it. Henry just strikes me as a guy. You know. Don't forget about the Olympic championship. Then he's got the two MMA world championships. He just strikes me as the guy that when he leaves, it's not in an empty arena. It's going to be in a sold out crowd with tears in his eyes and people patting him on the back. When that's what he deserves, right? He does deserve that standing ovation, even if it's for 10 seconds, but his body of work is flat amazing. I just didn't know he meant it. I guess he means it. Well, there's that, that, that boxer. What's his, what's it? Rodriguez. Is that his last name? Ryan Garcia. Oh, Garcia. Yeah, he was calling I mean, Henry out a little bit. Alex Volkanovsky's calling Henry out a little bit. And then we, I think Henry started that one, though. I think Henry went after Alex first, if I remember that timeline right. Yes, I but... I think Alex was the responder, yeah. Alex has entertained it. They've been going back and forth for a minute. Now, what Don't about this... Mid- on st- what about this, this mid-card boxer that Dennis didn't even have his name? You just said it, and I don't even know his name. And I follow boxing. I mean, that guy, could he draw flies? Is that a real fight within that community? I, I did not know who he was either, and I'm a big boxing fan. Then I looked at him. He's got like 6 million followers. So, yeah, okay. he must be. I've seen the name before. I've seen the face before. I think he's okay. he's the next in line face of, I think, Mexico. So he's right. he's in the mix. Canelo well, Jr., I would say, right? Something like that. Young guy? 20, 21, young guy? 21, I believe. Yeah, he's young. Okay. He's like 20-0, and 0, 17 knockouts. 21-0, and 0, 17 knockouts, something like that. So he's legit. It could be, but I was saying to Menace last week, it's not going to be Floyd Connor. It's not going to be that yeah. level of money, that level of breaking the internet sure. and media and whatnot, but it would be something. But sure. it's not a good fight for, if they're doing MMA, 
all day. Henry Cejudo. Oh. It's not a good boxing match for Henry Cejudo. Sure. Maybe they can get on an undercard with Logan Paul. Yeah. <laughs> Logan Paul's good for business, apparently. I, I hear good things about his numbers over there. His well, own. yeah, he was actually training at Alpha Male, I heard. And he's, I think he's actually like a, a state champ. In wrestling. Oh, was he in wrestling? Was I, think, he? I think I heard. I don't know about his. He, he was in the state tournament. He might be. He was a good wrestler. That's what I've heard. I don't know about California, state champ. You're right. I think Ohio or Iowa, somewhere in the well, Midwest. Well, all those states are all. You know, if you're if you're placing in that state, you're a good wrestler, or you sure. you can compete. You're an athlete for sure. And then well, you know, YouTube took off. Funny you use that word, Dennis, because I got to give Paul actually props on that too. You know, he did go out. He, you could see some athleticism, and you could also see some grit. You could see he prepared and took it seriously. I saw that too. People can tease him all they want because they're jealous of the numbers he brought in. I saw a good athlete that was trying to win. I mean, that's what I saw. You ever see the video of him training with uh, Paulo Costa? I didn't see that. Didn't Paulo knock him out? I want to say I read like yeah, that. Yeah, that was, I think, scripted. But yeah, that that's what happened when they were striking. But when they were grappling, he was scrambling with Paulo Costa. Really? Who, who's top I watched him, three I in the world. I watched him do an MMA fight. It was more of like a sparring pace, but uh, with AJ Aga's arm. And AJ won, but AJ had to work. It, it was a lot more effort than I think AJ knew he was going to have to put in. Yeah, he's yeah. a big physical athlete, and I think he yeah. was a solid wrestler. So, yeah, he could translate. Well, he's a bigger dude, right? Yeah. 170 minimum? Yeah. I think so. Uh, he yeah. fought, when, he fought at, when he fought in boxing, he fought at cruiserweight, which is like 190, I believe. or two. Yeah, he's a bigger dude. Yeah, so he's a big boy. And if he's strong, fit, you know. And like, I mean, with the money that man's made off YouTube, he can get the best of the best to train him. Sure. I, I thought you were going to say the best of the best supplements, but um, yeah, either way. Yeah, we're saying the same thing. Yeah, that too. Yeah. That too. I think he had, him and his brother had Shannon Briggs training them. Okay. Yeah. I've heard you oh, speak. Is Mike Tyson fighting? Yeah, that's what I was going to say. You know what? I hope so. I'm actually into it. <laughs> I, I, I've heard everything Dana said about, you know, these older guys. And I think we learned a lot from Chuck and Tito. And it's it's yeah. not going to be pretty and all of that stuff. When Mike Tyson does something, though, I, I watch. I mean, he's put out three training videos that I've seen. The longest one was 11 seconds. One was eight seconds and one was five seconds. I wish it would have been 11 minutes, eight minutes, and five. I was so sad when it was over. I, I There's something about him for me that is compelling. If he's doing something, I'm watching. Yeah. Because I, I saw I saw those same clips, and then I saw Holyfield like doing something. I was like, I don't know. Holyfield, don't do it. If right, yeah, don't do it. I agree. Those three combinations, they're sleeping. Yes. Evander did not look good. And there's something about these old boxers too, Dennis. I don't know what it is, but every time they shadow box, everything's right here. Like they throw an uppercut from here, but they throw their hook from here, and they throw their jab. Like they never extend, and I have no idea why. I always watch them, and they're just right. Like Holyfield's running and doing a hook. And doing, like, you know, Evander, you're going to have to get that arm out there just a little <laughs> bit. And I don't know what that is. I don't even know what kind of observation that is on my part, other than every time I watch those, for some reason, they're just really, they're right. They can't do any more effort than, I don't know if it's a tendon issue, coincidence, I don't know. But that's one takeaway that I have from watching you those two guys. Now, uh, you're saying this, I'm just thinking of this just now. You know how, like, in wrestling, we would extend really far for the high yes. crotches because the leg might be going. It's like, if you hit this as hard as you can, it's going to do that. Sure. You go like this, it's going to do that. So maybe that's what we were fucking up is we were throwing this, so we were actually fights like Yeah, these guys won world titles. Maybe we're learning something that this is all you need to do in Shadow Box. I don't as know, but I'm just telling you, can. Guys, that's what they're doing. Yes. I mean Tyson looks good for fifty three, but I don't think he should I mean, uh, do I want to see him do it? Sure. I don't think he should fight Shannon Briggs or someone like that. Like I was yeah, but... I, I was looking at it. Tyson hasn't fought since like two thousand five. Shannon Briggs was fighting like three years ago and winning oh, fights and winning fights. She, Shannon's the same age though, isn't he? I mean, Shannon looks like a Greek God carved out of stone, but I think he's 53 years old too, isn't he? I want to say, I just looked that up. I think they're the same age. No, I think Shannon's a little younger. Okay. And like I Shannon was fighting heavyweights, like not the top of the t top of the food chain, but he was fighting competent heavyweights three or four years ago. I remember okay. when Tyson was last fighting, he was done, checked out. He was getting beat by the journeyman. 
Sure. The journeyman were taking what he had and outboxing him. And then he would oh, yeah. he would find a way out. Like he would like let them lean on him. He would sit down and then all of a sudden go back to the corner, end of the round, they'd call the fight in between rounds. You know, that's where Tyson's yeah. career was at that point. And then we got Jail, do we have Sug this weekend? Yes, this weekend, Craig Jones returns. Craig Jones is taking on uh, uh, Wagner Rocha. It's actually a rematch, and Wagner won it. Craig Jones wants to get this one back. Ooh. And I only tell you that, Dennis, I only tell you that because Craig Jones is running through everybody so fast, so easy. He's barely breaking a sweat in there. I feel like I have to compel you to tune in and watch him. The fact that he's taking on somebody who beat him before, I mean, that's meaningful. That, there's not a lot of guys walking this planet that can say they got the best of Craig Jones. Wagner Rocha did. And he's he's a modest dude, too. We had him on the show, and he was he was he's like, yeah, best. Ryan, Gordon Ryan messes him. me up. You need him to talk a little bit, right? Like, come on, Craig, I need more. I need, He's a handsome dude. He's got a great story. He's great in his skill sets. Like, Craig, come on. I need a little more. Yeah, we, 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 we squeezed them pretty good. I think we get more of them, though, right, Stan? Yeah, but no, he was great. He was he was one of our one of my favorite guests to be on the show. He actually like um, opened up more than I've seen him in other interviews. Good. I, yeah. I have to go back and watch that. Yeah, he's a talented. I mean, my goodness, he, he's the best. Period. He's the best. That card's loaded though. We got Austin Vanderford. He's taking on uh, Gabriel Checo, and Gabriel just came off a real fat, like a one minute win. Uh, submission went over Jake Ellenberger. And we also have, here's one, Dennis, that I think you will like, but Jake Shields is going to take on former Bellator champion Brent Primus. And Primus has never entered submission underground, but he is an ace. He's an Eddie Bravo, 10th Planet, Fabiano Scherner, Black Belt, very, very good on the ground. That's a, that's a fun match. Yes. Jake Shields has been competing a lot, right? Yeah, Jake Shields is a handful still. He's just got that iron will. Dennis, have you ever worked out with him? You're a rolled with Jake. I, I haven't. I mean, I went I went boating with him one time and had a couple beers with him, but I never actually grappled with him. Um, he, he, I will say the same thing behind his back that I say about you behind your back, which is this guy is going to try to beat you the entire time. There is no point in this fight where Dennis is going to back down. There is no point you're going to talk Jake Shields out of trying to win. And the same could be said for Brent Primus, man. He's just one of those competitors. He's he coming to win. Yeah. Yeah, this is a stacked card here. And even Austin Vanderfort, that guy I think is like one of the sleepers. Like, I'd love to see him in the UFC, but he's in Bellator. I think that guy's a future champion. La last two fights were against uh, black belts, high level black belts. He tapped them both out. He is a purple belt, just by example, but he just loves to compete. Can't get him to say no, won't turn down an opponent. He wants to take on Craig Jones. I'll yeah. tell you, he is not ready for Craig Jones, and his coach, <laughs> fortunately, will not let him go take on Craig, but that's where his mind is. He That's what he wants. The harder, the better. Bring it on. Win or lose, <laughs> I'm in. Dude, I remember my third time ever training. I went with, like, a group of upstate guys to another gym, and then the owner of the gym was like, yeah, I'll go with this guy. And I was like, all right. So I'm going with the guy, and he tapped me. I was like, all right. So <laughs> I didn't know ankle lock. I put him in the Ken Shamrock ankle lock. Sure. I was just like tweaking, and uh, I didn't. I didn't get the tap. I think he had, he might have tapped, but I wasn't welcome back again. <laughs> okay, you went a he's, little hard. He was like, "You got this go. guy comes in my gym. He's doing backflips. He's you know, <laughs> like what." <laughs> years later, he regretted that. Years later, he regretted making that yeah. decision. But I get it. Yes. We actually have a funny Austin Vanderfort story, too. Austin Vanderfort is the lost episode of Menace and the Man. What like, happened? We we didn't know. Dan was in charge. Yeah. We didn't know how to work our equipment fully yet. It, <laughs> it, it was like our first traveling show, so the audio wasn't picking up. We had the most amazing interview with Austin. We had Austin open up. We had a cameo from Paige Van Zandt. We had, like, so many great stories. And then, like, 47 minutes in, we go, wait, I don't think it picked up any of the audio. I hit a button. We then get like four minutes with Austin. And now you ever see that meme with, um, I think it's Spice Adams, where he's just shooting shots and missing? Sure. That's been us trying to get Austin back on. Just missed, I would missed shots. Oh, you know what? I got to shoot the shots, Stan. I haven't, I've been letting, because hang on, Joe, me and Austin had this like real like organic bromance. It was weird. I'm like, are we friends? Are we you want to come over and sleep over, dude? His lady hops in. We had an awesome time. And then Stan lost it. I almost choked Stan. 
he, he is the coolest dude to talk to. Like, he has a different outlook on everything. As rough and tumble as he looks and as rough and tumble as this profession he chose, he is the most calmest, nicest. He's a thinker. She get, She's awesome, too. I don't know how well you know. Paige is so fun and bubbly. And she plays a little bit online. You know, she gets everybody work. She is, she yeah. is one of the great teammates I have ever had. Paige comes in the room. Even on days she can't train, she's been hurt for a little bit. She never misses practice. She encourages everybody. She's got a smile, a hello, a goodbye. She's the best. Yeah. yeah. We had, like, gold. So I listened to all the interviews. I listened to Chael's show. I listened to Helwani. I listened to everything. We were the first show where they called him Mr. Van Zant, But we didn't. Nice. We, we did not record it. So I was like, oh, I can't believe we lost that. We had so no credit. Yeah, no, no credit. credit. We had uh, we gotta get him back on. I had the like, so how'd you guys meet? The whole, you know. We had Paige. Paige was like, I was his sugar mama for a little while, you know. But now he's starting to add some money to the bank. Like we had gold, didn't record it, but we'll get nice. that one back. I'm gonna get. I'm gonna get it back for you, Chael. No, I hope you do. I hope you do. And and look, I can understand why he's blowing you off. I mean, right? You work hard and it doesn't get out there. But uh, yeah, he's great, man. I, I'm glad you guys had a good reaction for him. I'm going to reach out to him after this episode. Well, then we had him. He was coming on another time, but Menace had something, maybe work or something. like a, I think it was maybe when you had that party that time. We canceled the episode. So I was like, all right, Austin, sorry, we're not going to go tonight. And now since then, it's been a game of phone oh, tag. Man. But Chael knows we're how it is. Back. Get him back. Get Paige back in there too. Paige is a great interview. Oh yeah, they were singing Chael's praises too. They were like, "Oh, that." I was like, "What's your relationship with Chael?" He was like, "Oh, that's like my uncle. That's Uncle Chael." That's very sweet. I I really appreciate that they that they said that about me because I I look at it the same way, man. I mean, we got a good team out here. I got to tell you, Dennis, you've probably been mainly part of really good teams, but maybe over the years you you had some teams where just people just weren't getting along. This team out here in Oregon, man, we they get along really well, get some good opportunities, too. I think we got five guys signed with Bellator and three through the UFC, so there's opportunities. And that makes the gym exciting, right? When somebody's getting ready for something, now you get to be part of it. And it keeps oh, the motivation high. The best. The best. Some of my best training, some of my own best training camps is when I was already helping somebody get ready for a training camp, and then I was just in shape, and it was like, you want to fight? I'm like, fuck yeah, let's do this. Why not? Hey, by the way, the uh, give me – Give me some scoop. Have you guys talked to Gillespie uh, lately, Gregor? He's been fishing. Um, he's got a girlfriend. Nice. Promis he says, you know, he promises it's not, you know, making him soft. Sure. Um, what we all say, sure. He's, he's the, the, I think this quarantine, he's just been upstate in Roch Rochester just fishing. I don't think, because, you know, for him to do prior lessons and something, he crushes he makes probably over six figures in private lessons on Long Island. I've heard that for wrestling, purely yeah, wrestling, just right? wrestling, not even touching then, the MMA. You know, so not being able to do that, I didn't think he just like he isn't like Long Island isn't like his like he doesn't like love it here. It's not really he likes to like I don't know he likes to like I said fish and get on his road bike and go for long trips. Long Island's just the only thing here for him is money and good training partners. You know, sure. So, so, but, but uh, speaking of, but speaking of MMA, do you have any insight, man? Have they called him? Is he called the the organization? Is he looking to fight? I'm a Gregor fan, is why I asked. Yeah. Is he looking to do something? What's going on here? I I don't. I'm, I'm gonna. I'll ask him. I'll reach out after this episode. But I just think. Did that, that Kevin Lee fight rattle up. him? Did he get rattled in that fight? Yeah. Did that like throw his confidence or ruin his motivation? Does that have anything to do with the outcome of that contest? I don't. That to be honest to you, like I think the next fight will will tell all. Sure. You know, either he's back to his old ways and you know didn't skip a beat, or you're gonna see this like. Well, that was something me and Dennis have talked about with Gregor. Is we thought maybe the first loss he might be like, all right, I'm good. You know, like which I mean, he hasn't fought yet. Yeah, but I think he's he's talked about oh, it. Wow. Yeah, I've seen him say that he's coming back and whatnot and, like, go back and forth with fans on social media and shit. So I'm sure he's going to fight again, but I, it wouldn't have surprised me if... Because he doesn't love fighting. Like, this isn't his first love. Like Dennis has said, fighting is his side chick. Wrestling was his first love, you know? So he's sure. just doing this to keep competing and whatnot. But, um, yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if it motivated him. I also wouldn't be surprised if he was like, I'm good. I'm done. Sure. But, but Gregor's another one. We shoot shots. The one time we had Gregor on, we actually tricked him. 
and we just called him. Something me and Dennis do sometimes, we'll just call people while we're on the air. And if they pick up, it's, yep, you're on Medicine the Man. How are you? You know? <laughs> Yeah. That's how you get a show off the ground. Guerrilla marketing right there. Oh, the best is we did that to Gre- we did that to Uriah too. Faber. Faber? Well, yeah. De- Dennis talked to him like, yo, can I get you on? He didn't answer, so then Dennis was like, I'm just gonna call him. So he called him and we almost had like a candid Faber. He was like, Yeah, you know, that guy's on the sauce. He's taking all those supplements. And then we were like, Oh, you're on. He's like, Wait, I'm on? Hopefully I didn't say anything. <laughs> Hopefully I didn't say anything. <laughs> but I mean, uh, the, I mean awesome. yeah, you know how it is like Hey, you want to come on? Yep. What time? Five. Then like, you can't do anything from like 4 p.m. on. It's almost like, even though you're going to come on at five, it's like, what can I really do? Unless you do it wherever you're going to do the interview, you know? That's why, sure. that's why sometimes if you just hit me on the fly, and, uh, yeah, what's up? Boom. Here you know, we go. Been, for some people, that works better, you know? So. Yeah. So next up, Chael, we're actually going to play. Like, what's that? We're going to play, like, the dating game. What's that thing? Like, marriage. We're going to ask marriage questions. We're going to play, like, uh, what's the game? Oh, did you send her questions? No, but I got questions, so we're just going to put them both on the spot. We're going to play. Wait, who are we talking about? Who's her? What did I miss? We're about to have Felicia Spencer come on the show, and we're going to play, oh, like, okay. we're, we're going to have her and her husband, and we're going to play, like, you know, who steals the covers. Her husband fights. Yeah. Okay. Who's, who'd she, who's she married to? Remind me. His name is Todd Coppinger, I believe. He's like okay. an up and comer. I think they both kind of oh, okay. they both kind of started at the same time, but then life got in the way for him, work and whatnot. So she made it to the UFC. He's still fighting. I think he just well, had good it. for him. Yeah, he good just for him. Hey, she can get down. That girl can fight. Yeah, he's just tough as hell. Yes, she actually just said. Ch- I said we're we're finishing up with Chael, and then we're gonna jump to you. She was like, "Wow, Chael's the man." So well, well, tell her I tell her I said what's up. She knows I'm a fan, but uh, yeah, what she went through with Cyborg, she's gonna push Amanda. She is. That, that's going to be some minutes. No, nobody's getting Felicia out of there in the first round. That 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 I'm confident in telling you. Yeah, she's got a chin. For sure, got a. T- she can take him to the body. She'll get up off the bottom. She's gonna. She's trying to win at all times. Yes, as as they would say for a man. I don't know what you'd say for a woman, but she's a stud. She's a stud. I agree with that. <laughs> yeah. So we can ask her what the what the female version of that is. It might be uh. That at? Yeah, it might be a stud still. Yeah, stud might apply for both. We'll have to check that. But Uncle yeah, Chael, submission. Oh, oh, I see. Oh, you're rushing me. No, 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 no. You're not getting off with me. I have things to do. I have to go. Goodbye. No. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say Uncle Chael, submission underground this week. Thank you for putting on such an amazing show. But Uncle Chael, I like how he did that to us last time, too. Now, do you think he likes that we're like, all right, hey, Che, I'll catch you later. Like, obviously, you have things to do. Or he's like, motherfucker, I'll get off when I want, you know? Yeah, I guess. Nah, he's just a comedian. He knows what he's doing. 